Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 3D Printing Engineer Reacts. Today we're gonna to look at Raspberry Pi cases because this is an awesome example of something that everybody has very often interacted with inside of the 3D printing world, but is an electrical enclosure, which is very often uh, good knowledge for how to design uh, industrial componentry and enclosures, which is something we do very often. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and comment down below with any topics or types of products that you would like us to look at and review and react to because these are a lot of fun because we get to look at everybody else's ideas and kind of throw in our two bits about manufacturability. Because if you wanna mass produce it, there's optimizations that can be made that both reduce cost, make the part more reliable and better quality, but also allow you to create just a better quality product as a whole. And seeing all these ideas show you things that you can use inside of your design yourself. And let's just go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna start with Raspberry Pi case by Mecha Drafter. Oh, this one's cool. This is pretty darn nifty. Uh, the design of it is really cool because it actually has those legs, which are a feature that you can implement pretty easily in like a 3D printed design to create some standoff and some geometry and an aesthetic that's interesting. Uh, he's got a lot of veins in the bottom plate. Generally, you want parts to be as simple as possible. So you want to avoid cutouts and holes and that kind of stuff if possible. Uh, I assume he's probably going for chip cooling and airflow and that kind of stuff with those. So that's fine. But uh, overall, the design looks good. Those organic shapes are tough to print because you can't really print them on their side. You'd ha want to design them so you can print them vertically, which would create the most strength. Um, so like the bottom plate would be against the bed and that would be ideal. Or actually, if you took those two legs and like leaned them up on end um, and printed them like that so that they're sitting on a thin wall, sitting vertically, you'd get good strength, you get good aesthetics, um, and you get good producibility because it'd be really easy to eject from the machines. Um, not a fan of the fact that it's two parts, um, but that's not that big of a deal. It could use more fillets and rounding of the corners. It, it's kind of pieced together and that's not really what you want. But overall, that's a good design and I, I like it quite a bit. It's a nifty, nifty concept there. Um, but yeah, with like electrical enclosures, you can, if you were making like a square box, most people would make a square box and square box sits down on a table. But then you have like leveling issues. It's really nifty if you can just give it like just three little nubbins to give it legs or kind of those side, have the walls extend and make that little droop shape that like he had so that you have feet uh, for the enclosure. So it doesn't sit flat on a surface, which can improve aesthetics because it doesn't pick up dust. It doesn't scrub or rub on anything. And it has a nice cosmetic look to it. Uh, next one, Raspberry Pi DIN mounted case. Oh, this is, this is an interesting application because the value of 3D printing is that you're able to make very customized, well, not customized, accessorized types of products. You're able to produce something for a particular application. So in this case, uh, mounting up to a DIN bar. But uh, the, having those fixtures and interfaces and that kind of thing are really, really useful because you can integrate them straight into the part rather than like screwing them onto the side. Uh, this part is kind of not ideal for production because number one, the top cover of the enclosure is a flat piece and you don't want a flat piece like that. We'd want to print it on its edge again to have a small edge, which would change some design down the road. The rest of it is fine, but the the individual like standoffs, the, the way it's printed right now is not very ejectable and uh, those individual islands are sort of brittle. But again, this is, this is an enclosure. It's mounted on a wall. It doesn't have to be strong. Um, but it could be it could be optimized a bit and made a little bit tougher. Raspberry Pi enclosures 4B HDD SDD server cloud by Picho. Um, oh, okay. Um, this isn't really an enclosure. This is well, well, it is an enclosure, but it's using a Raspberry Pi as like a, a, a server cloud. So they have a display mounted on it, which is cool. And the enclosure is able to match this specific application. Being able to design an enclosure to match a specific application rather than having like cut holes in it for a display and this kind of stuff, uh, very often reduces manufacturing cost. Because if you buy an enclosure off the shelf and then modify it, very often buying it plus the modification costs as much as printing an original version of it. Um, especially if you're doing a production run of like 100 or 1,000 or 10,000. The design of this is fine. Again, I'd figure out some way of popping it up on its edge rather than printing it down flat where it looks like they have a bunch of support inside of it. Um, it's good that the support is inside because now any wonkiness from that support interface layer is hidden. It's inside of the enclosure, so who cares? But uh, the design itself is fine. 
but it, yeah, it could be optimized if it was put up on end and just kind of rounded out on some of the edges, some more fillets and that kind of stuff would be good. Raspberry Pi case, model B plus two and three by Ariander, Adriander, I think. I'm gonna try. Um, this is cool, it's sexy looking, sleek. This gives really good access to the GPIO pins and all the rest of it. I like this, I like this one quite a bit. It's, a, it's from a mass producibility standpoint, it's not good mainly because of the lid. Um, she needs it for the airflow again, but again, the airflow you want to have come in from the sides because this large flat plate with all of those small holes in the design of the Raspberry Pi and everything else, number one means it's not ejectable, which means you have manual removal from a print bed, which is expensive. And you have all that detail, which if one of those things goes wrong, then you might have to chuck the part depending on what your visual cosmetic standards are. So it's, it's not great in that context. Um, the lower half of it is fine. I mean, that's a standard enclosure. Again, I would want it designed to be vertical. So in order to achieve this, you with vertical, you have the cutouts on the side of the part. I would engineer it with built-in designed supports, which would literally just be a sprue going from the bottom to the top so that it has a way to close that off and then somebody can snip it out. Uh, in production. Or actually, we should do a design video on how to design these spacer sprues. I, 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 hang on, hang on, let me get this on the notes. We gotta get this design video on here. Because this is sort of important uh, to design these types of features. Otherwise, we have to do generated support. And generated support is really bad for this kind of stuff because it doesn't create a very good result. It uses extra material and it's uh, a lot of extra effort. So whereas a designed sprue is useful and we should do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, the rest of the design is fine-ish. It's Everybody always goes this direction of take a box, cut it in half, and uh, make the top and the bottom. I recommend watching one of our enclosure videos where we talk about lids. And there's a way of designing these sorts of enclosure lids to where you don't really have to compromise and have that big flat surface on the bed. So I do recommend you go watch that uh, after this video. The Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus Pi 2 with VESA mount. Again, having that custom mounting capability is really useful. And this design is really sleek because it has no actual bumps coming up out of it. It's a very slick part. So from a general design standpoint, I really like it. Um, it has screws screwing it both together. I would argue that with the quality of this design, you could have the lid and the bottom snap together and have that done better and eliminate those four screws. And also you don't need four screws, you only need two to hold a lid on. So kill two of them and have the other ones just have finding features and you reduce the complexity of the part and the, the additional assembly. But the rest of it is really slick. Again, big broad surfaces on this bed, you don't really want that. Uh, you wanna figure out a way to print this up on end. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it's not that bad. Actually, thinking about it right now, I think a thing you could do with many of these enclosures where you have the two halves shoved together is take the enclosure fully assembled with the two halves, take the two halves, put them up vertically, and have them come together with just a hair of space between them. And I mean, by a hair of space, I mean like 0.1 millimeters, tiny bit of space. That way they both print together and effectively support each other. That way you now are able to print the full enclosure all at once. It's very mass producible and you eliminate the need for additional supports because one half of the enclosure supports the other half. Um, so you could do all kinds of nifty stuff with that. And if, if you were being really clever, there's a number of other things that you could do. So we, we really need to do an enclosure design video of top and bottom lids showing how to do this so that it comes off the machine fully complete and ready to go without supports or anything else because you can get an enclosure as good as this, if not better. So we will do a Raspberry Pi enclosure design video where we make one of these suckers and show you some nifty tricks because they're too complex to like sh just talk about in this video, um, but they'll be really nifty. So subscribe if you want to see that. Folding Raspberry Pi case by Walter. Oh, this is sick. This is a vertical enclosure with basically no supports that folds together. He has it printing down flat. That's less than ideal, but given the fact that he's eliminated the lid part, and now it's just a single plate and then you fold it together, it's pretty slick and it's a good way to do it. But if you're able to take that fold and have it print vertically, you have the same amount of strength in that seam. Um, you'd want to, if you're, if a lot of people would print, want to print this in PLA, if you were doing PLA, you'd have to do it flat in order to have a thin enough layer. 
uh, vertical, it'd break itself off most likely. Um, but if you were using polypropylene or even PETG, you could print this vertically just fine. And that it also lets you use ESD safe and that kind of thing, which is really important for these kind of things. Um, the venting looks great. It's a little bit unhandy because it might require supports. I think he may have iterated them between like one inch and stair stacked them like that so that you don't need support. If those little vent holes are small enough, you don't need support. So I'm, I'm torn about whether how clever this is, but I'm going to say it's pretty darn clever. I rate, I'm not using a rating system right now, but I'm going to say that this right here is like a seven or an eight. I mean, it's a good design and has a lot of capability within it. Sleeve case for Raspberry Pi. Here we go, hot dog. Yes, single print that prints vertically with a small lid that just caps on the top. The lid they have is basically a flat piece. I wouldn't make it a flat piece. I'd give it a little bit more depth than that so that, again, you can auto eject it, but it's a small piece, so it can be auto ejected. And then the main enclosure looks great, is sleek, is clean, looks nice. This is good. This is really good. This, this one's like a nine. It looks good, good airflow. I'd make it a little bit thicker so that the USB ports don't pop out the top or have it blend up to them because you don't want things sticking out the side that are going to catch and short and all the rest of this stuff. Cover them up. It, it doesn't it doesn't ruin this. I mean, it can be it can be done. Rack mount Raspberry Pi case remix. Oh, this is that same case again, but with a rack mount on it. Yeah, this is something the companies really underestimate. The fact that if you have a 3D print and you've like uploaded it to our system, adding variations costs nothing. You have no molding cost. So you can create variations that fit in particular applications and then people can order them on demand. You can like well, upload them to our print on demand app or anything like that. And you get exactly what you need when you need it. You never have to store inventory. You never have to get molds. You can create really bespoke solutions um, and but then scale them up because it's like, oh, well, we need these Raspberry Pis, but we're going to put 2000 of them inside of this factory to work with our PLCs. Well, you'd be like, fine, what else? You don't, still don't need a mold. Say you need 2,000 in a couple weeks and we'll get them to you. Um, the design of it is fine. It needs support now. Wait, no, it doesn't need support because he's got that flange right there up on the front. That flange just prints flat down on the bed, which makes it super strong too. As strong as any standardly manufactured part. That's slick. Good good job, guys. Good job, uh, Pat Penned. Uh, that's a good design. And yeah, the, the addition of those types of features is so useful in an in a industrial context. <gasps> Hinged Raspberry Pi case by Clockspring. His stuff is so good, so good. And this is no exception. First of all, it's a hinged design so that again, the top and the bottom can print at the same time. Problems with this though are that since it's a hinged design, he's doubled the size of the bed interface layer. And since it's a hexagonal pattern with all those cutouts on the side, it cannot be printed vertically. I love his designs. This design is not that good. This design would be um, kind of like a four to five for manufacturability. Actually, maybe even lower than that. From a manufacturability standpoint, it's not very good. Looks great. Functions great. Tolerances are great. Concepts are awesome. The fasteners on the side, the screw fasteners to bind the two halves together is something that people should use more often. Even in traditional manufacturing and that kind of stuff, that system should be used more often. Sure, it could be done better and easier with like a screw that just holds the two halves together, but it looks so good and it's so easy and it's from, from a product design standpoint, it screams, this is where you get access to this. You don't have to wonder what screw it is or search for it. It's a very clear ergonomic leading the customer to where you want them to be. So it, it looks great, but yeah, that pattern I would want to be uh, a pattern embedded, not a pattern cut all the way through. Uh, the two halves, you don't want a big old interface layer. So this part we would probably turn down from a manufacturing standpoint and just not make it, but it looks great. <laughs> Next up, we have the Star Wars Raspberry Pi 3 case. Mm. This is a great example of being able to create a product that would have otherwise never existed before. Now, obviously you can't just go and, and make a product based on your fandom um, because the, whoever owns the will have something to say about you merchandising their intellectual property, but uh, it's possible now. Or companies like that are able to create these types of products and throw them all kind of at the wall and see how they go. And it's such a, a nifty capability because now a company can address fans better and create better stuff, but they can do it at scale, which was never possible. 
But this design is actually really useful because all of the other enclosures that we looked at uh, were low profile, pretty low profile. So they had to be printed vertically. You couldn't print the top and the bottom on a bed because they were so thin and stuck so much that it'd be tough. This one, since it's two domes on top of each other, those domes could almost be printed as is and be ejectable to where you have really good quality outer surface finish and the bed surfaces mesh together so you don't have to worry about that ever being a cosmetic issue because it's never seen. Uh, you get good airflow around the park because you get to create a nice little side vent. And the interior design of this is really good too. The standoffs are chunky. Uh, they've been designed correctly. They didn't do like a standard round sprue, like a traditional injection molded design. They made them thick and chunky and kind of shelved. Um, the designer here clearly understands what 3D printing can and cannot do and doesn't have any kind of past experience that's causing bad habits. Um, the one modification I would make is that it has the USB and the HDMI holes cut straight through the center. I wouldn't do that. Have it cut straight through the top or straight through the bottom. That way you don't have those hole overhangs on both of the parts. You only have them on one. Uh, so you can refine the part a little bit more and simplify the other part. Um, right now you have the same complexity twice, whereas you could cut one of those off just by having the hole cut off straight at the bottom. Um, so that's a really good way to modify this. Um, basically, yeah, just shift IO up like an eighth of an inch um, so that the parting line is below the ports rather than straight through the middle of the ports. But from a manufacturability standpoint, this is like a, maybe a six or a seven. From a design standpoint, it's really cool because again, it's a fandom product to where Disney could say, oh, we wanna reach out to the hobbyist. We're gonna make some Star Wars themed toys for everybody who's a Raspberry Pi hobbyist, which is a nifty thing to do. And you need it to create a really unique product that never existed before. All right, well, that's the last of those enclosures. So we should talk to you about enclosure design in general. We have done a number of videos about how to design enclosures well. We talk about the outer exterior surface finish, how to do sprues and standoffs, and how to actually make these enclosures so that you don't have any supports, but you still have a very strong enclosure. So I recommend you go watch those right now. Let us know if there's other categories that you'd like us to take a look at, and we'll take a look at them. Have a great day, everybody.